Good day, everyone. So I thought I'd do a review of these battery packs that I bought off of eBay. I believe these battery packs uh, came from hybrid buses. Uh, so these packs are comprised of A123 systems cells. Uh, so I'll just show you here. So you can see the cells there. Now this is interesting. Look at the, the uh, label here. Uh, 40 volt uh, nominal but able to supply over 2,000 amps. So that's peak, it's not continuous, but still that's a lot of power. Um, also, one thing I noticed, the uh, terminals are on both ends here. And on this end, you can see that the bars actually has holes in them. So I believe that's to, uh, to serve a function of uh, sort of like a fuse. So if there's short circuit or something, uh, this will, bar will probably melt and allow for, a, for the current to stop flowing. Um, so here I've got these um, ISDT BG8S con connected to it. Uh, it's uh, 12 uh, packs, 12 cells in a series, eight in parallel. So I've got one monitoring six of the cells and I've got this other one here connected to monitor the other six. Um, so these screws you see all along here, are connected to each uh, group of cells. This, these two packs, even though I uh, purchased them at the same time, they were actually built a little differently. Uh, this, they were um, glued with some kind of silicone or rubber compound. It was easy to remove. These were like a uh, hard plastic and they were really, really difficult to remove. Actually, I haven't uh, finished removing them. So for now, we're just gonna test this one battery pack. And if you look at the voltage, You'll see it does vary a bit. Seems like the lowest on this one is 3.25. And the highest seems to be 3.3. .3. And over here, lowest is 3.27. And the highest is 3.289, I believe. So this is not ideal because uh, when I'm going to want to balance these, uh, it'll balance the, the six groups and then these six groups. So we'll probably end up with uh, some somewhat of an imbalance. But uh, what I can do then is to charge whichever group is uh, lower. Uh, I didn't do a balance uh, yet. You have 50 millivolts of imbalance on this one. And actually on this one only 19 millivolts of imbalance. These are lithium ferrite. I haven't set this one yet properly, so let's go in the menu right now. Change that. So the battery percentage has gone up, which is more appropriate uh, for this chemistry. So uh, just a brief note of why I'm using, I purchased these batteries. Uh, I have a lot of 18650 cells. These uh, cells are actually um, 26650. So they're uh, slightly bigger uh, round, uh, the same length as 18650s. What's, uh, what my purpose for these is possibly to be used as a 12 volt battery replacement. So the, like I said, these are 12 cells in series. Um, so if I can break the pack into three groups of four cells, uh, that's about the prop, uh, nominal voltage for uh, to replace lead acid batteries. Uh, looking at the chart here, these are really uh, resilient cells. They can tolerate up to 4.2 volts per cell, down to 2 volts. Now that's not ideal, but it can tolerate that. Uh, that's the maximum voltage range. Um, it says recommended charge to 3.6 volts. They are able to deliver 60 amps continuous. So for this pack, which is eight uh, cells in parallel, you're, you could actually deliver 480 amps continuous, which is really good. Okay, so at 3.5 volt per cell, the full charge is about 42 volts. So let's uh, go ahead and set the voltage to 42.
and the amperage is at uh, so already set at 14.1 so this will can do 15 volts uh, 15 amps uh, but I don't like uh, using the, the full capacity of a, of a unit so I, I like to at least leave a one amp uh, buffer so we'll go ahead and turn that on okay so now it's charging uh, you can see here it's charging at uh, about 580 watts and the voltage is going up so we'll let this charge for a while and then come back uh, when it gets closer to the full charge voltage so the battery has been charging for a little bit more than an hour uh, the I increased the voltage slightly to 42.7 because the batteries quickly seemed to uh, reach the maximum voltage. So it's not looking very good. The voltage climbed fairly quickly. And now as you can see, it's only charging at one amp. So one amp shared amongst uh, eight batteries in parallel is, is not much. That would basically mean it's full. Um, looking at these meters, You can see that uh, there's a, quite a bit of an imbalance. Well, this one, the lowest is 3.46. So right now they're balancing the orange ones means they're uh, applied a load to try and get the voltage down. You can see this one is a little bit high at 3.78. So uh, let's check the other one. So for this one, you have three cells that are pretty much balanced at 3.48 and the highest one is 3.75 so I'm gonna let this uh, go I'll leave the, the the DC to DC converter on it so it's applying one amp load these two meters will continue balancing um, as, it, as I've said in my previous videos these balancers are quite slow so with the size of pack it could take days before it becomes balanced, but uh, we'll see. I'll let it go overnight and I'll check it tomorrow morning. Okay, so the battery's been not, now been charging for a little over 20 hours. And as you can see from the uh, power supply, it's only putting in uh, 0.04 amps. Now you can notice that the voltage is higher than uh, originally set. I did that to make sure that the cells were uh, fully charged. Now, if you look at the left balancer, it's flashing with a green light, which means that one is not fully balanced, but the one on the right is flashing blue. So that one is fully balanced. So each cell is about at 3.6 volt, which is good. And over here, I have one group of cell that's a little lower than the other ones, but it's still close enough. So just note, I have been assisting the balance with by applying a load, uh, a 12 volt light bulb to the various terminals in order to expedite the balance process. They were quite uh, imbalanced, but uh, as you can see now, they're, it's not too, too bad. Now, in order to apply a load to test the battery pack, um, it's quite a high voltage. I, I don't have a readily available method of, of doing the test. So what I've decided to do is I'll plug in the uh, the battery into the input of this DC to DC converter, step it down to be able to plug it into this grid tie inverter. So that'll pump uh, the power from the batteries back into the grid and I'll use this uh, watt meter to uh, determine how many watt hours I'm going to get out of the batteries. Let me go ahead and wire that up and I'll continue in a minute. Okay, so I now have the battery pack plugged in to this watt meter and then from the watt meter into the input of this uh, DC to DC converter. So you can see the watt meter here is indicating 43.3 volts, which is the same thing as we have on the input over here. I don't know if you can see that, it's 43.3. So I've set the output of this to 25 volts and of course this one has the maximum of 14 amps and so we're going to plug in the output of this into my grid tie which is going to push the power into the grid 
Now there is a little uh, issue with these uh, balance uh, meters with the alarm. The minimum voltage alarm I can put is 2.5 volts. Um, should be able to go all the way down to two with uh, these cells. But looking at the discharge chart, you can see that it quickly drops after you hit 2.5 volts. So there's not much capacity left between 2 and 2.5. So we're going to try that out and see how much power we can get out of it. So let's connect the negative terminal and then the positive and let's turn this on. So it takes a few seconds before the grid tie inverter to start uh, taking a load. You can see now the um, loads is increasing now pulling about seven amps now eight so this grid tie inverter is a 300 watts so uh, it doesn't seem to be getting much closer to 300 watts it's pulling about 350 watts keeps uh, moving around a bit but um, so we're Pulling roughly six amps from the battery brick, which is really nothing for the, this type of pack. Unfortunately, this is the only load that I have uh, available to me. Actually, let's have a quick look at the cells to see how they're doing. So over here, it's already telling me it's down to 83%. And this one over here, so it says it's 55%. That's interesting. So there is a quite a bit of a difference between the two. Okay, so we just had one of the cell hit 2.5 volts. This one right here. And as you can see, it's dropping pretty quickly. It's currently 2.44. Now I'll have a look at the other cells on this group. So only one of them is below 3 volts. All the one, other ones are above 3 volts. Back to this one, and so you can see the first three cells seem to be still pretty good at 3.1. The bottom one is still dropping pretty quickly. We have 220 millivolt difference between the highest and the lowest. And here I have 865 millivolts between the highest and the lowest. So it's quite significant. Considering I'm only pulling um, between six and seven amps. So I'm not even pulling one amp per cell and we have 6.6 .6 amp hour or 241 watt hours so we're not even half of what the capacity of the battery pack is supposed to be so obviously this is a very well worn pack and the reason they got rid of it is because it was past its prime so 
Well, that's what happens when you buy stuff off of eBay. You never know. Sometimes you get good stuff. Sometimes you get bad stuff. So I will probably take this pack apart and then find out if I can salvage some of the cells. For now, might as well just stop this process.